नमस्ते जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ द राइट स्टैंड आई एम आनंद नरसिम्हन जिस डेज टू गो फॉर द फर्स्ट वोट टू बी कास्ट एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सीम्स टू हैव सेट द टोन फॉर द बिग बैटल द बैटल फॉर भारत इन अ कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव इंटरव्यू टू द एडिटर ऑफ ए एन आई स्मिता प्रकाश प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी नॉट ओनली गिविंग एन अकाउंट ऑफ हिस ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड एंड कॉलिंग द लास्ट डेकेट जस्ट अ ट्रेलर बट ऑल्सो कॉल्ड आउट द ऑपोजिशन ओवर मल्टीपल इशूज द इंटरव्यू कवर्ड अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ टॉपिक्स from the ram mandir inauguration to the bjp's prospects in the south particularly in the state of tamil nadu the prime minister said that sanatan dharma is a part of our constitution he blamed the opposition parties for deriding sanatana for their appeasement politics the prime minister also accused the opposition of being divisive and hell bent on undermining the nation now here's how the prime minister put the congress and the dmk combined on the mat His first attack the DMK perhaps was born out of this hatred the DNA of the DMK itself attack the congress must answer the insult to sanatan why did they keep quiet don't ask me ask the congress party they are allies why did the congress which has the likes of mahatma gandhi and indira gandhi who proudly wore their sanatan values has the congress lost its basic character itself is a question he asked he also said what's the congress's compulsion to ally with the dmk the fifth attack what is this perversion in the congress's mindset and he also questioned those he said that since ever since the construction of the bhavya ram mandir for ram lala those who made this entire issue political don't have an issue there and they are looking to something looking at something Listen in. हिंदुस्तान में अन्य राज्यों में भाजपा की सरकार का मॉडल देखा देश भर में जो तमिल बंधु रहते हैं उन्होंने अपने घरों में जाके बताया भी हम जिस राज्य में रहते हैं वहां तो ये हो रहा है तो लोग स्वाभाविक तमिल प्रजा कंपेरिजन करने लगी कि जो हवा खड़ा किया गया था ये तो अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं अब जैसे मैंने तमिल काशी संगम किया तो तमिलनाडु में डीएम पार्टी वाले लोग ये तो पानीपुरी वाले पानीपुरी वाले कर करके मजाक उड़ाते थे लेकिन जब तमिलनाडु के लोग काशी संगम कार्यक्रम में आए और काशी का रूप रंग देखा उन्होंने कहा हमने तो जो सुना था ऐसा नहीं है ये तो बहुत डेवलप दिखता है बड़ी प्रगति हो रही है आईटी का नेटवर्क दिखता है तो सोचने का तरीका बदलने लगा और उसके कारण डी के, के प्रति जबरदस्त गुस्सा पैदा हुआ है वो गुस्सा पैदा डाइवर्ट हो रहा है बीजेपी की तरफ पॉजिटिव वे में सवाल कांग्रेस को पूछना चाहिए कि तुम्हारी क्या मजबूरी है कि सनातन के खिलाफ इतना जहर उगलने वाले लोगों के साथ तुम क्यों बैठे हो भाई क्या तुम्हारी राजनीति अधूरी रह जाएगी क्या तो आपका संविधान बना उस संविधान में सनातन का गौरव का हिस्सा था और आज सनातन को इतनी भयंकर गालियां देने की हिम्मत हो और आप उनके साथ चुनाव की राजनीति करें उनके साथ मंच साझा करे मजबूरी कांग्रेस की ये देश के लिए चिंता का विषय है जॉइनिंग इज नाउ अभिजीत अयर मित्रा सीनियर फेलो इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ पीस एंड कॉन्फ्लिक्ट स्टडीज वी ऑल्सो हैव संजय झा ऑथर पॉलिटिकल एनालिस्ट लीन्स टूवर्ड्स द कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड वी शुड हैव सुमन सी रमन ऑथर एंड पोलिटिकल कॉमेंटेटर ज्वाइनिंग हस फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु इन अ बिट एंड ऑल्सो सरदार आर पी सिंह नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन ऑफ द बीजेपी शुड बी विद अस but uh, sanjay ja how would you respond because the pm has further elaborated on all of this and then he also questioned the congress party saying don't ask me about the dmk and what the dmk is saying ask the congress party what's their compulsion to ally with a party that itself is deriding sanatan dharma values that were practiced by mahatma gandhi and proudly worn by even the former prime minister indira gandhi who used to wear the rudraksha beads very proudly um you know ever since narendra modi the prime minister of india called the congress manifesto a muslim league where he said every page was divisive it takes a lot of courage to take anything he says very seriously anand let me just tell you straight forward it's time we are all adults i think we are all mature people here the prime minister is getting extremely desperate he's abused the sanctity of that august office 
by actually now indulging in the most crude and vulgar kind of communal polarization uh, i i for example want to add a few points here he says it is a matter of great concern mr prime minister if you're watching this program the people of india believe the biggest concern is the criminal corrupt electoral bond through which your government clearly in, under the instructions of your own government we will come to the electoral bond we are discussing this in the second half of this debate extortion yeah. institutions of extortion mr modi the government of india is being talked about not just in india but all over the world as having developed certain mafioso manifestations where the agencies that are supposed to investigate have actually become brutal ruthless agencies that are actually giving contracts to those who donate money or are threatening other people with serious consequences if they don't donate money so you're seeing criminality and crony capitalism on two sides of the coin again the prime minister needs to apologize to the farmers of india anand uh, i'm sir, aware of sir, what they said in the manifesto in 2014 we will give msp to the farmers sanjay ja sanjay ja i i i tell you what if you if you're going to broad base and get into i i'm going to request you because we will talk about electoral bonds in the latter half right no. now the simple focus is has the congress let go of its core values itself the muslim league used to call it a call used to call the congress party a nationalist hindu nationalist party that's how they've been quoted pandit jawalal nehru in the 1930s has espoused hindu nationalism and today by your own words and the prime minister's own words the congress party is akin in its manifesto to the muslim league the prime minister even today has said that it seems to have compromised on its own hindu values because it is okay with the dmk abusing and going uh, and laying into sanatan dharm that's the focus has the congress party done that you've had the likes of rohan gupta gorav vallabh and others who have quit because of the fact that they did not go and attend the pran pratishtha of ram lala the congress leadership okay anna let me answer you very quickly you know why the others left i read their statements they were clearly dictated by the bjp it cell and obviously now they're looking for a political career in the bjp they have to mouth exactly what they are ordered to do i don't want to even comment on that very pedestrian issue here is another expose of mr modi's attempt to distort history who was in partnership with the muslim league it is the members of the extreme right wing hindu mahasabha and the members of the rss who were actually supporting the entire collaboration where you all know everybody knows that shama prasad mukherjee had an alliance with the muslim league i mean doesn't he even know his history so basically what mr modi is saying that our ideological gurus were soft on the muslim league well you know i'm glad he's making a public confession secondly anand let's look at the clear math does mr modi know that the congress party has governed india for over 55 years of the 70 77 years that we have been independent you think the votes have come in only from a 14 or 13% muslim population he's insulting all the political leaders he's insulting all the voters who have voted the congress repeatedly in 10 of the 17 general elections mm. when narendra modi says or rather his supporters say that india became independent after 2014 it insults the freedom fighters it insults the technocrats who have built iits the iims and the bhaba atomic research center it insults of farmers who created the green revolution it uh, again again what no no wha- once Silicon again Valley. once again you are you are trying to shift the bold quotes very smartly and very articulately towards where you believe you you hold a position of strength i am going to come back to the <laughs> same <laughs> thing yeah. is the congress no party no no is the congress party why is the congress party silent if it believes that it respects the core values of hindus in hindustan why is it silent when the dmk bash sanatan dharm that's a simple question he asked one minute now now no no you you we cannot have we cannot we 
संजय झा वी गॉट अभिजीत अयर मित्रा एंड ऑल्सो सदर आर पी सिंह लेट दम प्लीज वे इन टू द डिबेट आई रिक्वेस्ट यू सर नो सर द कांग्रेस पार्टी केम आउट एंड इट्स ओन प्रेसिडेंट सन केम आउट एंड एंडोस्ट एंड देर वॉज नो एडमोनिशन बाय द कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट वेन दैड नो देर वॉज इन देर वॉज नो नो देर वॉज नो एडमोनिशन ओपनली द कांग्रेस टॉप लीडरशिप रिफ्यूज टू अटेंड द प्राण प्रतिष्ठा ऑफ लामलला ब्रांडिंग इट अ पोलिटिकल इवेंट वेन इट वॉज नॉट द पोलिटिकल प्रेजेंस देर डिड नन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट मिनिस्टर sir none of the bjp why ministers were present there why none of the bjp ministers none of the cabinets no no don't say why were why were why look at who came there sir there. the people common people came and came came there and they were invited and they refused those who wanted to go were not invited sir despite being ram bhaks and those who were invited did not go that's a reality one minute Anand sardar rp singh respond sardar rp no no one project for no, no, please eat, please eat, sanjay ji the sardar rp singh please respond of course it was made into a political sanjay ji anand sanjay ji anand yeah sure. Yes, sir. Rapi Singh. The pro- problem with the Congress Party and the sympathizers of the people have been kicked out of Congress. Also, they still uh, hold the the same frame. I mean, they use the same glasses, and they can't see beyond that. And that that is the green color glasses, and they have to see everything through the prism of the green color. Uh, uh, the 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 overall what, what is happening in the country. One, 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 one. Uh, for example, no, you, no he didn't he didn't speak when you spoke, sir. Please. Please Just ask him to clarify. Sir, I, I will. I will ask him. At least allow him to make his opening yeah. remark, and okay. then we'll count. Okay. Ji, yes, sir. Dar Apni Singh. When you spread lies and you try to speak uh, untrue, which is that Shama uh, uh, Prasad Mukherjee tied up with Muslim League. I mean, he's not aware that it was the Krishak Sama, uh, Sam, uh, Samaj Party, not Muslim League. So he can he can misquote. He's trying to misquote, uh, or he's trying to misquote, uh, misuse the history. as per his screenings but coming to the issue of what is there in the congress party today's manifesto let me read out one part uh, the congress promised to appoint more judges belonging to minority community and minority as per them is only muslims i mean we don't fall into the minority categories because they butchered us to gain the majority vote only they use us as a uh, ploy to uh, to gain to gain the votes but fact is this is there in the uh, there, this is there in the manifesto uh, this is page uh, this is part of the uh, manifesto and also not this only congress uh, then on page number 8 uh, para number 7 congress will ensure that uh, like every citizen minority have a freedom of choice and dress food and language and personal laws i mean they want to bring sharia again sharia is back to the system that's what the personal law is uh, uh, what is there in the personal law and then is again targeting for muslim votes that, that's the problem so uh, uh, i don't understand what is he trying to convey that no and also just recently i mean just a few days just less than a week back the muslim league the muslim league in kerala has said don't use your flag here because it is it resembles the tricolor so you are not allowed to use the tricolor in vinar so you use only your symbol because tricolor doesn't suit us so they have avoided by that the the the, uh, the party president in kerala uh, kpcc president has said that yes we will not use the tricolor uh, the flag which carries a, which carry resembles the tricolor so this is what the character of congress is and then they talk about uh, that we 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 are more uh, 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 saffron or we are more more uh, composite uh, as far uh, the mm-hmm. ideology goes i mean that used to be at some given time but right from somna uh, somna te- somna temple to uh, ayodhya uh, the mm-hmm. message has been the same that you can't attend a temple uh, uh, function you can't go to a temple function uh, nehru ji stopped uh, the then president and now the party president stopped their party cadre and the party leaders i mean they said no you can't go and who defied them uh, who defied the leader they were they have been thrown out of the party no they haven't sir one of them is actually fighting kangana ranaut from mandi so there is a correction there but they did advise and they themselves refused to go uh, abhijit ayer mitra has the congress party compromised on hindu values to resign hindu, one in between he, he, hindu ethos but they have been brought back sir it's uh, so i'm what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is yes the prime no, minister he, makes he a resigned only to put his word, to put his message across yeah the prime minister makes a serious allegation Ayy. there are people who have quit to sardar rp singh that's also uh, that's true but is it only the bjp that is taking the uh, championing the cause of hindus in bharat is that is that what the prime minister is saying abhijit ayer mitra where do you stand when he says that the quest question the congress party did not question the dmk and this is also directly linked to the sentiment on ground where most of the villages in a lot of the most number of villages named after ram are in tamil nadu the pm said that 
He also said that people are upset with the way Hinduism is being bashed and there is a different thinking and that's why the BJP is getting traction. How do you respond? And do you agree with the Prime Minister or disagree? Completely. You see, Hindu consolidation does not happen in a vacuum. Why is Hindu consolidation happening right now? It's clearly because people feel that their Hindu identity is bigger than their caste identity, which was the primary, uh, 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 you know, rallier of votes for the last 30, 40 years. So clearly something is shifting. Number one. Number two, uh, let's examine the exact words that Udhaya Nidhi Stalin used. Sanatana Dharmatte Vulch Kattano which means what? Exterminate it. You don't use words cut. Your Tamil, you know this. Mm. Words cutify is not a word that you use, uh, you know, to sweep the house or to reform something. Reform has a very different word in Tamil. Mm. So he said what he did, it was completely genocidal intent. And far from, I mean, you know, even a rudimentary alliances, it didn't affect the alliance. You see, the alliances can continue with a pro forma condemnation. They won't even do that. Mm. Right. And this, um, uh, 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 their leader Rahul Gandhi has a long history of using Hinduism when it suits him and dumps him when he uses it. When he wants it, he is Janaudhari Brahman, otherwise, he is very secular, this and that. You see, he's been brought up as a European social democrat. He's completely disconnected with the reality of India, right? Which is why he has this wonderful knack of picking up issues that nobody wants to talk about. Hmm. Coming to the second fact, uh, third point. Which is that, you know, uh, uh, my friend Sanjay seems to think that Narendra Modi is a great joke. In fact, Narendra Modi is such a joke that Sanjay didn't even want to talk about what was actually said and wanted to talk about everything else under the sun. Which really shows you that Modi has this knack of hitting the nail on the head and understanding what the pulse of the people is. And poor Rahul, who's yet to win an election, what did the New York Times uh, reporter said? Uh, you know, Sanjay's ex-colleague uh, Randeep Surjewala is wearing such a dour face at the end of that NDTV Dulai that the New York Times correspondent gave Rahul Gandhi. Yet to win an election. So sad. What is Rahul Gandhi going to win? He knows nothing. He's completely out of sync with the people of this country. Hmm. There is more Hindu consolidation. The last election was won by a greater thing than the previous election. Electoral bonds, they're desperately trying to make it into a scam. Uh, do, you, do you remember? We'll they talk electoral bonds in a bit. We'll talk electoral bonds in a bit. Right now, the focus in the <laughs> South. Tam ha, yes, Abhijit, please complete. So, with Tamil Nadu, you know, I think we're seeing an inflection point. This is not the first time that Hinduism has been abused. You remember Ivera? Uh, uh, Ivera Ramaswamy Nayakar, yeah. Yeah, used to go, go around uh, uh, smashing Hindu idols and things like that and used to say the foulest of things. It didn't matter at that. Today, it clearly matters because you're seeing crowds for Modi in a way that no BJP leader has been able to draw for a very long time. You're also looking at a great outpouring of national affection. Remember, when APJ Abdul Kalam died, you remember all the, uh, the funeral yes. cortege and everything. When uh, the former chief of army staff died <coughs> in a tragic helicopter crash, you remember seeing uh, 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 the massive uh, crowds that came out for him. There is clearly a nationalist feeling coming out there. And where the BJP goes, there is a certain mixing of Hinduism and politics. Whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But uh, there is a mixing of that. And you clearly see that Hindu identity coming out. Hmm. And to a large extent, we should, uh, you know, uh, appreciate Annamalai's role in this. Because, you know, for the longest time, Tamil Nadu BJP did not forget having a charismatic face. It simply did not have a face. Hmm. Anna Malai has been taking his in the news. That, that is what he's done for the party yeah. because national parties have struggled against the regional party narrative uh, or the regionalist narrative, which again Pradeshik party uh, that Prime Minister Narendra Modi and, spoke and, about. And but so. but so Suman Raman, the need for the Congress to agree or not condemn outright the DMK. Why is the Congress allying with the DMK is a question that the BJP has asked why its Prime Minister today when he is speak, speaking with Smita Prakash of ANI. Suman Raman. And, and this yeah, entire uh, aspect of going against the core values and DNA of Bharat itself. Somnath to Ayodhya. Yeah. So we are now back to the um, Sanatan Dharma, Hindu-Muslim. Uh, yeah. We are back to essentially that as the campaign uh, strategy. And I think that, uh, I mean, it's, it's the BJP has been doing it for quite some time. But they are now continuing to do that. I thought this election would be fought on the... 
uh, track record of the last 5 years or the last 10 years mm. it's obviously no, he spoken on that also he spoken elaborately on that and he said take 55 no, no, years of the congress I, and take 10 I, I years of, take take 10 years no, of what I, I, I have done yeah, uh, uh, it is Anand, there Anand, that is what it is also uh, there it is also there so it's exactly what you want to see and 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 what you want to hear but the rest was Anand, also spoken about to, by the prime minister yes sumant ramana mr mitra spoke uninterrupted for about so you said it is minutes. not there I that's why i corrected you i did not say it is not there ah, i never there. said it is not there i said that it is sad that this election is also going to be fought <coughs> on the hindu muslim or the hindutva hmm. sanatan dharma and so on look the question of uh, you know i i i hope that this uh, you know this particular um, uh, debate is put out on youtube so that everyone can watch the grand upsurge in tamil nadu as uh, was as is being spoken about by some on the show mm. of the bjp june 4th we will see what a strong upsurge it is um it it really is a huge upsurge on social media but let us see on june 4th where the strong upsurge is and how many seats the bjp mm. is actually going to win in tamil nadu mm. so i think that look as a propaganda uh, vehicle this interview the ani interview ani is basically essentially a propaganda channel everybody knows that <laughs> so they are putting out a propaganda piece for the prime minister before the election <laughs> this is fine i mean it's there it's their uh, right to shoot to, the to, messenger to run the run the run the agency no 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 uh, run the agency the way they <laughs> want to they have hmm. made a conscious choice which is fine the hmm. no the point is talk about a level playing field officially the ani is a news agency so hmm. logically if you are interviewing the prime minister you should interview the leader of the opposition you should getting into that look the issue is this is not a by any stretch of imagination appearing to be the 400 400 par election that it even 2 months ago appeared to be hmm. right now hmm. it is looking like the bjp would need to simply dramatically do sweep the north and parts of the east if they even want to get to 303 because there are going to be losses in the south now how big those losses are how small those losses are we don't know we'll have to wait and see hmm. but clearly it is not appearing to be the rosy picture that was painted about a month and a half ago and which many of us including myself hmm. who once thought that this was going to be a 320 330 350 kind of uh, you know return for the bjp hmm. are now seeing that there is a distinct pushback particularly in states like karnataka and states like maharashtra to some extent in states like telangana and of course in tamil nadu and uh, and kerala as well hmm. so i think that the need to sort of you know um, appeal to the hindutva sentiment has increased i'm i'm looking at it from that context what the prime minister says cannot be seen in isolation hmm. he now realizes that up has to be swept madhya pradesh has to be swept rajasthan has to be swept there is no room no, for but error that, there the sumant raman that anyways had to be swept the moment he said 370 par for the bjp so the moment he said no, that no, at no. that time this was fate accompli because that's the only way they would have got to 303 he has set the benchmark at 370 that means you have to enter bastions where you had returned as literally a not that is 120 odd seats including odisha and the states extra excluding karnataka uh, the southern states but sardar rp singh what you were 2 months before compared to that today you are far in a weaker position than you were 2 months ago that's what uh, sumant raman is saying the fact that you got to return to the sanatana plank it. many multiple multiple opinions right now on the show it is you who is saying it so also saying are also are also showing the same thing it's not just me Ab- absolutely uh, we and have today, we have like we're putting all our debates on youtube and we're going to chronicle all of yeah. this and we're going to look back at this on Please. the 4th of june and and for every uh, statement that is there one of somebody or the other will have to eat the humble pie who does we'll have to wait and watch absolutely yes yes Please sardar R- yes sardar rp singh anand i want to come in yeah coming to you sanjay ji well well i'll be surely sitting sitting here with you on the 4th of june and we'll prefer the, I'll, i'll request make all the guests sit with me and then we'll talk about this uh, 370 par and then, then we'll tell you where all we have made in notes and then you you are not able to see them today but you no one believe that we'll do good in bengal i mean we we are doing extremely good in bengal just time also we did well last time also i mean but no one thought and congress is totally wiped off left is totally wiped off so uh, is andhra pradesh my take my word we'll do much better in andhra pradesh uh, as, as a alliance partner and as a party also 
will do much better in Telangana uh, as a as a, a party and will do will sweep Karnataka. Take my words that Karnataka will sweep. When hmm. I say sweep, mean with the alliance partner, we're going to sweep Karnataka also, and we are surely going to make inroads in Kerala and Tamil Nadu this time. Right. And northeast and east, which is going to miracle, and northeast we are going to sweep again. They are also accepting the panel, people here on the panel is also Swanti Raman is also accepting the same. And then uh, north, they have already left. North, they have already said that we are nothing in north. Hmm. Uh, sir, overconfidence sometimes is also not good because there is word coming down on ground that this overconfidence is... I, I appeal through your channel. Can I make a point? At, can, at, I make a point? can I make a point? So can I make so a point? Can I make a point? Can I make a small point? So much so that the Pramukhs may not just be doing what they need to do for the BJP to activate as an electoral machine. Can I make, can I make so a point? confidence is good. Overconfidence and arrogance can, can, never pays. I, I can only very humbly can I, say can that. Can I make a point? Can uh, we'll I make come a point? Back. It's the same panel. We'll come back. And we'll take on very another, small, very no, small sir, point. Another, another, small another point. issue, sir. You can make your point. Sanjay Jaji also wanted to say we'll come to electoral bonds. What he had to say on electoral bonds after just two minutes, two minute break. Please stay with us. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, an Indian. Uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura, Punjab. So that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail. Now we're learning that uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura in Punjab uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Saeed is what we're learning. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. And uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said. And uh, in fact, Tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple CCTV in the locality. But despite that, he has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the name of the man who killed Sarbjit Singh, who was an Indian national who was lodged in Pakistan's jail and was uh, killed. Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarvjit Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarvjit Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba, who was also responsible for the killing of uh, Sarabji Singh in Pakistan's court Lakhpal jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was uh, roaming scot-free and uh, since uh, for a very long time uh On the 15th of February, the Supreme Court struck down the electoral bond scheme as unconstitutional. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in his interview to the ANI, has said that when opposition thinks about this honestly, they will regret the scheme being struck down. He accused the opposition parties of spreading lies over electoral bond scheme, even reminding them of the support from the same parties during discussions in Parliament. He said that the country has been pushed towards black money now. The Prime Minister said that of the 3,000 companies that gave donations through the scheme, 26 faced action by probe agencies such as the ED. And he said that of these 26 companies, there were 16 who took electoral bonds. And of these 16 companies, 37% of the amount went to the BJP and 63% of the electoral bond contributions went to the collective opposition parties who are currently part of the INDI alliance. Listen into what the PM said. Electoral bonds. Uh, ke mein. Rahul Gandhi, who is 
हर भाषण में कहते हैं और विपक्ष के नेता भी कहते हैं कि इसमें धांधली हुई है आ, आपकी पार्टी के लोग भी कहते हैं कि अगर गलती है अगर इसमें कोई गुंजाइश है इसके सुधार में तो वो कर सकते हैं आ, क्या ये आ, गलत फैसला था इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स का पहली बात है कि हमारे देश में लंबे अरसे से चर्चा चली है कि चुनावों में काला धन एक बहुत बड़ा खतरनाक खेल हो रहा है देश के चुनावों को काले धन से मुक्ति मिले इसके लिए कुछ करना चाहिए चर्चा लंबे समय से चल रही है चुनाव में खर्च तो होता ही होता है कोई इनकार नहीं कर सकता है मेरी पार्टी भी करती है सब पार्टियां करती है कैंडिडेट भी करते हैं और पैसे लोगों से लेने पड़ते हैं सब पार्टियां लेती हैं मैं चाहता था कि हम कुछ कोशिश करें कि इस काले धन से हमारे चुनाव को कैसे मुक्ति मिले ट्रांसपेरेंसी कैसे आए एक प्रामाणिक पवित्र विचार मेरे मन में था रास्ते खोज रहे थे एक छोटा सा रास्ता मिला वही पूर्ण है वैसे हमने उस समय भी क्लेम नहीं किया था पार्लियामेंट में डिबेट में सबने उसको सराहा भी था आज जो लोग उलट पुलट बोल रहे हैं उन्होंने सराहा था पार्लियामेंट डिबेट देख लीजिए हमने कैसे कैसे काम किए जैसे हजार और दो हजार के नोट खत्म कर दिए चुनाव में वही बड़े बड़े मात्रा में ट्रैवलिंग करते हैं क्यों कि ये काला धन खत्म हो हमने सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा था कि बीस हजार रुपये तक पॉलिटिकल पार्टियां कैश ले सकती हैं मैंने कानून बनाकर नियम बना करके बीस हजार को ढाई हजार कर दिया क्यों क्योंकि मैं नहीं चाहता था कि कैश वाला कारोबार चले फिर मैंने कहा है कि इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड कि जो पार्टी अपना सिक्रेसी मेंटेन करना चाहती है होता था क्या जैसे हम पहले बीजेपी में चेक से पैसा लेंगे तय किया तो सब व्यापारी लोग हमें आकर के कहें साहब हम चेक से दे ही नहीं सकते हम लोग क्यों नहीं दे सकते बोले हम चेक से देंगे तो हमें लिखना पड़ेगा हम लिखेंगे तो जो सरकार है वो देखेगी कि ये विपक्ष को इतना पैसा दिया तो हमें तो वो परेशान करेंगे तो बोले हम तो पैसे देने के लिए तैयार हैं लेकिन चेक से नहीं देंगे तो मुझे याद है हमारे और नब्बे के दशक में जो चुनाव में हमको बड़ी दिक्कत आई थी पैसे नहीं थे हमारे पास तो ये सारी चीज़ों का मुझे पता था तो मैंने कहा भाई तो हमने कहा भाई ऐसा है अब देखिए इलेक्ट्रोरल बॉन्ड न होते तो किस व्यवस्था में ताकत है वो ढूंढ के निकालते कि पैसा कहां से आया और कहां गया सो आ पैनल स्टे ऑन विद अस सो लेट्स नॉट वेस्ट टाइम इन इंट्रोड्यूसिंग ऑल ऑफ देम अगेन देर ऑल वेरी फेमिलियर फेसेस यस संजय झा इलेक्टोरल पॉइंट्स नाउ हाउ वुड यू रिस्पॉन्ड टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आनंद दाइम मिनिस्टर एज यूजल इज बींग वेरी इकोनॉमिकल विद ट्रूथ the first thing he should do is to acknowledge that the supreme court actually had to say it is unconstitutional and therefore illegal because the government introduced a law for campaign finance which was keeping the donor's name anonymous but the government had found out a secret way to find out who was giving money to whom why 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 the obesity mr modi and the second question that he's completely dodged why did the state bank of india which reports to the finance ministry believe that the people of india are stupid i mean the sbi actually went and said we'll disclose the name after the elections but when they were forced to do by the supreme court they gave it in 48 hours clearly the malafide intent is for everyone to see hmm. the government told sbi delay it what was the government trying to hide and we discovered that because as everybody added the 2 plus 2 we discovered in hundreds of cases that there are cases of extortion ed income tax and cbi threatening people the famous case of sarath reddy in the arvind kejriwal issue is up there in the open and there are multiple such cases and there are cases of people who have donated money and got contracts for making infrastructure projects where tunnels have collapsed i mean this is in my opinion and the opinion of several people anand the biggest what i would call is a mafia underworld operation 
committed by any political party in any democracy in the world mm. trust me you have only seen the beginning of it right let me right. add a point here mm. there's just one point yes does the prime minister know or do you think that just because he gives this interview to an agency called uh, amit narendra international people don't know the truth what is the truth there are companies who are not allowed companies are not allowed to give electoral bonds unless they were 3 years old there were companies created around that time which give money which means sbi decided to completely look away mm-hmm. i mean a kyc is done for you and me but no kyc done for companies giving money to bjp can you imagine that okay. one last point right lakhs of uh, companies which gave money to the bjp primarily 80% were those whose ag- aggregate losses were 1 lakh crore so if you add all the companies that aggregate losses of 1 lakh crore hmm they were giving money 16 16 companies raided by the ed and when they decided to contribute to electoral bonds 37% went to the bjp 67% went to the opposition so if Says it was who? the bjp per- that's who? what the data is and that's what the- this data no, no. So, one minute one so, minute so, 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 so that's exactly Amitra the data that is brand. out and that is exactly what the prime i'm quoting one minute sir i'm quoting the no, prime no, minister minute. you are saying the, the prime if a prime, prime minister the prime minister is being economical with the truth but the minister the prime minister is being economical with the truth but the opposition is absolutely clear and uh, and not a single shred of uh, factual uh, discrepancy in whatever claims the opposition is making that's the point let sardar rp singh respond yes sardar no, no, let me make one no, point sir sir i have limited time so let's get okay. everybody in please please okay. yes sardar rp singh investigate it if you have the courage like rafael like demonetization sir what happened with the supreme court and what it said about rafael let's not get there and also as far as electo one minute sir as far as electoral bounds the honorable supreme court today has countermanded what the supreme court the honorable supreme court itself opined back in 2018 so is the supreme court also saying something about the wisdom of the judges then please ask that question also let's not waste time yes sardar rp singh we need to investigate sardar rp singh sardar rp singh sir there is a reason why there is a reason why letters are being written by former justices and former high court judges etc to the honorable supreme court and that's another domain we got limited time so i'm going to stick to this yes sardar rp singh well probably sanjay ja thinks that by uh, uh, spitting out whatever he want to spit out here he can probably get sir, a uh, sardar rp singh i have one request uh, sir Let's uh, not. Let, you are you are also somebody who's been very erudite. Let's not get personal with our remarks at all. It's all right, sir. Uh, being sharp is no, okay. No, but but, but uh, please, sir, I, it okay, doesn't okay, behoove okay, of you. Okay, does okay, not behoove okay, of anybody. I'll, I'll revise. Not, I'll, uh, sorry, yeah, let, thank let you, sir. Let me, thank let, you, sir. Let, thank me, you. Let, me, let me revise. Thank you. I sir. take my words back and I revise. Let me revise my words. Yes. Mr. Sanjay Tha, Sanjay Jha thinks that whatever he can say here and probably by saying so, uh, using your channel and he can create a uh, environment or he can create a narrative. The fact is. that they have all the right to go to court again and it is because of electoral bond you know what is happening what is not happening hmm. and probably now after electoral bond court has to give a way out how to ensure that the black money is not being used in the uh, elections hmm. now so what is as the next we speak ahead, uh, sorry to no sorry to interrupt you as we speak the election commission has so far even before the first phase of polling crore worth of cash drugs and alcohol in their in their raids around the elections and this is across political parties so that's what that's what's the evidence on ground but so, yes yes sir that no, rp singh continue only only opposition so, the, 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 the. continue sir that rp singh also 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 we know recently how the liquor money uh, and through illicit uh, trading of liquor liquor money 45 crore was spent in goa there are records now on that account and hmm. I, how how do you forget there is a gentleman named uh, rajender singh solanki who was caught red handed with some 20 lakh rupees he said this not my money this is the he, he was a contestant of the aam aadmi party from gujarat and he said this not my money this is the money which is being tra- uh, transacted by my hmm. driver who is the angri the go in between the center party and the state party this how the money transaction happened in the country and we wanted to stop it i mean if you have a better option better better way to do it please go come come, come forward and tell that yeah but don't target something where everyone has got uh, benefit or advantage or every, everyone has been part of no, it wha- whether wha- it was tmc brs congress I mean, yes so so wha- everyone got uh, uh, got money i mean uh, everyone got electoral bond give me second and also Gee. not that uh, if you want uh, i'll send you a list of the complete list of the uh, 
people who gave electoral bond to TMC and what benefits TMC as a, as a government has uh, given to those people who got electoral bond. Hmm. No, 67% Anand. of the beneficiaries and it's not just that all the money has gone only to the BJP. There is huge monies that have gone and which was alleged to have gone to the BJP is actually gone to regional parties and other parties who are now part of the INDI alliance and that also numbers are there. My question sir is Suman C. Raman, the court had an issue of transparency. The fact is that this money when it is in electoral bonds is converted to white. Whether it is black money source, whatever it is, it was being deposited in a bank and there was a record. The court could have said make it transparent retrospectively and also for the future. Make all those who are making any payments, make it trans. That was the issue of transparency. But by deeming it illegal, you have taken away a mechanism where black money was becoming white. Is that not a misstep, Suman Siraman? And is there not a point there? Okay. Irrespective of who is donating point. to who. Two quick points. The purpose of this question was it would have been extremely embarrassing to have an interview with the Prime Minister without raising electoral bonds. So the electoral bond was asked for the purpose of being asked and then the Prime Minister was allowed to have an uninterrupted say without any interjections, without any counter questioning, without any question on the linkage between the enforcement directorate raids and the money which were paid. But never mind. I mean, that's part of the, propaganda. The so Prime Minister answered that question. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, no. Mr. Suman no, no, Siraman. The Prime second, Minister said, second, of the second, companies that were raided, there were 16 so one, companies one that raided. There were 16 so one, companies one second, that uh, opted for electoral second, bonds. Anand, and of those one 16 second. companies, 37% Anand, went to the BJP, 67 Anand, to the we, to the opposition. Why not? Why not? We put out this data. The data is already there. It will be compiled tomorrow again. Mm. All the fact checkers will have to go through it, and they'll come up with this data. Yeah. But it's it's an, it's never mind. I mean, the, the 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 purpose has been served. Now it is now it is assumed that only thirty seven percent went to BJP and sixty three percent went to the others. Yeah. But that okay. We, you we have the option of not trusting the, the prime minister. I have the option of no, trusting no, no, no. the prime minister because he's the you prime can, minister, and can. this is what the trust prime can. minister has said. So you, if you, you believe that the prime on, minister huh? is factually wrong, you are welcome to go and disprove him. But but. I'm don't pass value what, what judgments thing, on things here. Why didn't he I'm say not. this? He said it, sir. He did. Why no, didn't no, he say second, that? He said second, it, sir. He did. One second, Anand. Anand, I don't know whether you saw the uh, the pharma uh, uh, you know files video which was which came out a couple of days ago, which had a detailed uh, set of companies which actually were in the dock over charges as serious as having adulterated medicines. And how, you know, in, in one or two cases there, uh, they were sort of right. either let off the hook or the matter is still lying. You know, the point is, Anand, the point is, electoral bonds, the anonymous, the Prime Minister at, in, in a, Sir, a in the issue. interview actually said, what is the problem? We have made In the issue of electoral bonds, sir, the issue was Supreme about transparency. It. it was not about legality the and Supreme it was not about... Sir, black the money was Supreme getting converted to white because it was being declared. And it's been stopped. It's, was it a misstep or not? We will companies. see in the next two years. Companies there will be six elections and we will see it. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, I'm sorry, I'm way over time. Last point. Sir, I'm way over time. I will give you 30 seconds. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, exactly 30 Please, I'm already about a minute and a half over, sir, on this show. Please. 30 seconds to Abhijit Ayer Mitra, yes. All you need to know about the intellect of this discussion is you have to be seriously bipolar to think introducing a paper trail where none existed before is somehow anti-transparency. Uh, 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 mm. uh, what was the system before? Nothing. Right. Only, no receipts, no nothing. And this, according to them, is the way of the future. Just truly remarkable. Yeah, no, EVMs, it, it's, 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 it's the same logic with EVMs versus ballot paper. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to wind up. We'll take this forward. Plenty of commercials, ladies and gentlemen. It's election time and that's why we've got to keep this short. I'm already over on time. Apologies. Thank you very, very much. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura, Punjab. So that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail. Now we're learning that Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura, in Punjab. Uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Saeed is what we're learning. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab.
and uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said. And uh, in fact, Tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well-protected area with multiple CCTV in the locality. But despite that, he has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the name of the man who killed Sarbjit Singh, who was an Indian national who was lodged in Pakistan's jail and was uh, killed. Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarvjit Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarvjit Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba, who was also responsible for the killing of uh, Sarabji Singh in Pakistan's court like jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was uh, roaming scot-free and uh, since uh, for a very long time uh, he was uh, uh, he has been a criminal uh, and he had a criminal background the, the interesting part is that he was killed by two bike burn assailants and that happened at a place which was An unprecedented and historic election. A vote that decides Bharat's quest for greatness. A mandate that paves the way for a billion aspirations. A verdict the world is watching closely. A battle for a rising Bharat's glorious future. Battle for Bharat. Elections equals CNN News 18. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura, Punjab. So that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail. Now we're learning that uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura, in Punjab. Uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of half is Said is what we are learning. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. And uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said. And uh, in fact, Tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple CCTV in the locality. But despite that, he has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the name of the man who killed Sarbjit Singh, who was an Indian national who was lodged in Pakistan's jail and was uh, killed. Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarvjit Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarvjit Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba, who was also responsible for the killing of uh, Sarabji Singh in Pakistan's court like for jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was uh, roaming scot-free and uh, since uh, for a very long time uh, he was 
uh, he has been a criminal uh, and he had a criminal background. The, the interesting part is that he was killed by two bike burn assailants and that happened at a place. ये भारत की आजादी के सौ साल और देश में एक प्रेरणा जगनी चाहिए और आजादी के सौ साल अपने आप एक बहुत इंस्पिरेशन है लोकतंत्र में चुनाव को हमने लाइट नहीं लेना चाहिए ये एक बहुत बड़ा महापर्व है और इसलिए मेरा तो मत है कि उत्सव उत्सव के रूप में मनाना चाहिए Amir Sarfraz Tamba the man who killed Sarabjit Singh an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura Punjab so that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail now we're learning that uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura in Punjab uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said is what we are learning so that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab and uh, Amir Singh who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail and uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab so that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan now we're also learning that uh, this man Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said and uh, in fact tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple cctv in the locality but despite that he has been gunned down in pakistan's punjab amir sarfaraz tamba is the name of the man who killed sarbjit singh who was an indian national who was lodged in pakistan's jail and was uh, killed Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013 Sarjeet Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore and now we're learning that the killer of Sarjeet Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan CNN news 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this Abhishek what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news well we know that uh, this person uh, Tamba who was also responsible for the killing of Uh, Sarbjit Singh in Pakistan's court like a jail and uh, on the charges of killing he was also uh, served he, he also served some years of punishment but then he was later uh, bailed out and he was stands with prime minister modi public se bahut hi aisa baat public sabse badi gawa hai why did they give kachetti on what compulsion they give the land of tamil nadu to sri lanka one of the biggest jokers we have in tamil nadu is anavari income tax cpi and ed very unfortunate that how these three offices are completely misused narendra modi ji has tried to enlarge the acceptability of the bill so jagan has to pack his bags and has to uh, walk around courts santosh jain is waiting for him i think Amir Sarfaraz Tamba the man who killed Sarabjit Singh an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura Punjab so that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail now we're learning that uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura in Punjab uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said is what we are learning so that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan
where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. And uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said. And uh, in fact, Tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple CCTV in the locality. But despite that, he has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the name of the man who killed Sarbjit Singh, who was an Indian national who was lodged in Pakistan's jail and was uh, killed. Uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarjeet Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarjeet Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba. President Obama, President uh, uh, Biden, President Trump, in tino ke saath aapne kaam kiya hua hai aur US, India, US relations ek upward trajectory pe hai. Lekin bhoat se mulk hai jo bharat ki upward trajectory se parishan hoote hai. Ye, it is understood ki ye hai jase ki China. Kyunki wo, uh, they used to think ki group of two hooga. Ek, ek taraf China, ek taraf uh, America. Matlab, do power centers hoonge. To, मैं सिर्फ उदाहरण के लिए चाइना दे रही हूँ लेकिन हमारे इर्दगिर्द जो मुल्क हैं वो भी थोड़े असमंजस में हैं कि ये भारत की ट्रैजेक्टरी इतनी ऊपर इतनी जल्दी जा रही है क्या हम अपने नेबरहुड को अपने सक्सेस स्टोरी का हिस्सा नहीं बना सकते अच्छा सवाल आपने पूछा हमारी डे वन से पॉलिसी है एक नेबर फर्स्ट दूसरा एक्ट ईस्ट तो जो हमारे ईस्टर्न पार्ट के जो हमारे आसियान कंट्री के देश हैं उसमें हमने एक्ट ईस्ट पॉलिसी लिया है यहाँ नेबरहुड फर्स्ट तो ये हमारा डे वन से हमारे देश की भी पॉलिसी है और हमारी भी पॉलिसी है पहले लू कैस था मैंने आकर के उसको एक्ट ईस्ट कहा लेकिन इसमें दूसरा आज दुनिया के सैकड़ों मील दूर भी कोई देश है उनको लगता है कि भारत की प्रगति में हमारा कोई बेनिफिट है तो पड़ोसी क्यों नहीं देखेगा आज पड़ोसी सबसे ज़्यादा खुश हैं क्योंकि भारत उनके सबसे अब जैसे कोविड के कालखंड में कोई पड़ोसी देश ऐसा नहीं है कि जिसकी हमने मदद नहीं की हो नेचुरल कैलेमिटी कोई ऐसा देश नहीं है जिस अब जब नेपाल में भूकंप आया फर्स्ट रिस्पॉन्डर हम थे श्रीलंका में Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, an Indian uh, who was killed by unknown gunmen in Islampura, Punjab. So that's the update that is coming in that uh, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba is the man who killed Sarabjit Singh, uh, who was an Indian lodged in the Pakistan jail. Now we're learning that uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has also been now gunned down in Islampura, in Punjab. Uh, and uh, Tamba is apparently a close associate of half is Said is what we are learning. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan where uh, Sarabjit Singh's killer has been gunned down in Pakistan's Punjab. And uh, Amir Sarfraz Tamba is the man who was uh, behind the killing of Sarabjit Singh, who was an Indian national lodged in Pakistan's jail. And uh, now we're learning that the killer has been gunned down in Islampura in Punjab. So that's the big update that is coming in from Pakistan. Now we're also learning that uh, this man, Tamba, is apparently a close associate of Hafiz Said.
and uh, in fact tamba was released just two years back from the jail and he was staying in a very well protected area with multiple cctv in the locality but despite that he has been gunned down in pakistan's punjab amir sarfaraz tamba is the name of the man who killed sarbjeet singh who was an indian national who was lodged in pakistan's jail and was uh, killed uh, while being in Pakistan's jail in 2013. Sarjeet wo Singh was attacked with bricks and iron rods by a group of inmates in Lahore. And now we're learning that the killer of Sarjeet Singh has been gunned down in Pakistan. CNN News 18's Abhishek Jha is now joining us with more details on this. Abhishek, what more details do you have on this particular piece of breaking news? Well, we know that uh, this person, uh, Tamba, who was also responsible for the killing of uh, Sarjeet Singh, Good evening. Welcome to Brass Tax. I'm Zaka Jacob. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given his first extensive interview before the first phase of polls later this week. He has attacked the Congress and the DMK of being anti-Sanatan and anti-Hindu. He has said that the Congress declined the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishtha.